backside. Hurry, 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 hurry. <laughs> Hunting with hawks in this particular episode was primal, historical, traditional. There's so many words that can be put to this thing, but if I had to wrap it all up into one word, it would be amazing. Oh! She's trying to figure out where to go next. Woo! Going up, going up, going up. Ah! Today, we're not hunting with guns. We're hunting with birds. This is Carolina All Out. We're here in Harnett County today at Hawk Manor with Chip Gentry and Pandora. And so we're gonna be hunting, not with a gun today, but we're gonna be using these guys to go after squirrel and rabbit. And I'm very excited about this. So awesome. Chip, what is Pandora? Um, she's actually a hybrid. She's a falcon. So she's actually a Gear Peregrine Oplomato. So she's got a couple different things in her. She's basically the size of a male peregrine falcon. Okay. And it looks very similar to that. Very beautiful. Now we may or may not be hunting with her, but we're gonna be hunting with the larger birds. We are, uh, we're actually gonna be hunting with a couple of red-tailed hawks. All right, we know what red-tailed hogs are in North Carolina. Uh, the most common bird of prey there is. Uh, but we've got a, a, a well-seasoned nine-year-old female we're gonna hunt. Her name is Peyton. And then we're gonna hunt a pair of Harris hawks. They're indigenous to the Southwest deserts of Texas and Arizona. And the unique thing about them and what we want everybody to see is uh, they're the only social bird of prey, which means you can hunt multiple birds at one time. They're, they're the wolves. Like a pack. Yeah, they're the wolves of the skies and they work cooperatively together. This is gonna be cool. Been wanting to do a show like this for a long time. We're gonna do it without the gun. We're gonna do it with Birds of Prey here on Carolina All Out. I heard about Chip actually through Harrison, his son. We were doing a duck hunt, wood duck hunt, with some boys down in Harney County, and Harrison was part of that party. Started talking to me about his dad and the hawks that he owned, and the fact that he was a falconer, and that Harrison himself was a falconer, and probably one of the youngest ones in the country. So it was very cool. I knew immediately I had to get in touch with Chip, and let's go do a show together. Chip has been training and rehabilitating birds of prey for decades and has found a passion in harnessing the natural instincts of these airborne predators. When I was 23 years old, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do in life, as many 23-year-olds are, but I knew I wanted to do something with animals. I bought a pet shop, a pet store, and we did any kind of animal you could think of, but we also dealt exotic animals. We had one of the largest reptile collections on the East Coast at that time, so I was really used to a lot of people coming in to buy rodents to feed snakes because we had a big clientele of reptile owners. Well, one day a gentleman came in and he wanted to buy some mice, and I said, what are you feeding? I'm expecting him to say a ball python or something. And he said, I'm feeding a red-tailed hawk. And it kind of intrigued me because I already hunted, but I had never experienced anything quite like this. Falconry is one of the oldest and purest forms of hunting known to man. With a recorded history dating back to ancient Mesopotamia, the history of this hunting sport is rich in tradition. As I've gotten older, I've begun to realize what I am fortunate enough to be a part of. 
the oldest field sport known to man. Started over 4,000 years ago, somewhere probably around Iraq, um, Afghanistan, somewhere in that part of the world. In that time period, there's no guns or bows and arrows. The deserts are full of life, but how are you gonna catch them? And it may have been out of necessity. Throughout the ages, it was mainly reserved for noblemen and royalty of medieval Europe and the Mongolian Empire. Genghis Khan was a falconer, and even today, the, the Khans that live up in Kazakhstan in the mountainous areas, they're known as the eagle hunters. Those are descendants of him, and it's been passed on generation after generation for all these years. But you can see how it, it traveled and it stuck with all these cultures. And then when you get into the Renaissance era, uh, when the Crusades were happening and the Europeans go over into the Middle East, you got this clash of cultures, but one thing that those Middle Eastern people shared with the Europeans or that the Europeans took from them was um, birds of prey and falconry. And so then you see people like Frederick II and Edward the Confessor and Elizabeth I and Henry VIII. All these famous people throughout history in this time period had birds of prey. As time went on, falconry became less of a sport and more of a hobby as other hunting methods were introduced. Today, falconry has had a sudden resurgence across North America and Europe and is quickly gaining traction as people are excited to experience this historical practice up close and personal. As a falconer, I get that same nostalgic feeling to think about I am doing something today that guys were doing 4,000 years ago, that famous kings and queens were, were doing. And to be able to practice this sport and enjoy it the same way that they did, to be a part of that is just, um, I don't know, it's pretty significant. Carolina All Out is brought to you by the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. Go hunt, go fish, go wild. Carolina Cooker Cast Iron Cookware, a tradition born in the South. XGO, those who know, wear XGO. Montgomery Community College, educating since 1967. Browning, the best there is. New Sports Shop, we've got the gear. And by Farms and Land Realty. Selling land is what we do. Don't go away, there's more Carolina All Out coming up. We got, now that looks like a buzzard. Yeah, it's a, a black vulture. A vulture, okay. CAO host Chris Douglas is headed to Harnett County to meet outfitter and bird expert Chip Gentry of Hawk Manor Falconry. What kind of what kind of hawks are these? They're Harris hawks. This is Eloise. Uh, we, we call her Wheezy and Eli, and they are 16 and 26 years old. Uh, okay. They are a social bird of prey, and they live in family groups, which allows us to hunt them together cooperatively. You, we've hunted as many as six and eight birds at one time. Wow. Um, but we, we just hunt a pair of them. Okay, and Eli is a male, and so I notice he's smaller. That's right. So in the in the raptor world, um, with the exception of the North American kestrel falcon, we tell the sexes by size. By size. The females are always bigger than the males. Gotcha. It's her job to incubate eggs, protect the nest. His job is, is to go out and get food for everybody. So she's bigger and stronger, and he's a little more agile, a little faster. Very cool. Cool. Well, let's, uh, let's see what we can do with him. Let's get it done. I've always had a fascination with animals, and it's part of the reason why we do what we do here at Carolina All Out, because we really want to show other people just how great they are. And you know, to see Chip and Harrison working with their birds, and know that that bird sitting on their glove there represents years, not talking months, I'm talking years of, of work with this bird. I mean, you're looking at two decades worth of relationship that a man has had with a bird. That's phenomenal to me. Come on, he's in there. Get him. Uh, you might be able to see in the background. 
Chip and Harrison. We've got, we've got two Harris hawks up now and they hunt in tandem together. So they're sitting around wherever the guys are waiting for them to bump something out of a nest. And uh, really cool. This is, this is something different from most anything I've ever done. We're still hunting, we're still traveling, moving through the woods, but uh, you can see Harrison over here. He's just working, just bumping a nest here and there. Squirrel comes out. The birds are already locked on. They're looking at where they're working, and so if they catch any movement whatsoever, they're on it. Hunting with a gun in a deer stand in camouflage is the way we typically have to hunt because we have to gain an advantage over our prey in order to be able to, to kill our prey. This was different because every squirrel in that entire block of woods knew what was fixing to happen. They knew the rules, the game they were gonna play, and they knew the consequences. He's gonna work his way around using those other trees to get up there where the squirrel is at. So now's when the chess match kind of begins. You can see she's trying to figure out where to go next. And you can see he's, there he goes, he's getting higher and higher. Oh, and on this side. Get him, get, get, get her, Harrison, get her. Back side. Hurry, 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 Follow Carolina All Out on Facebook and Instagram for insider tips and premier hunting and fishing locations. Hit subscribe on YouTube and never miss another episode. Brought to you by Montgomery Community College. Welcome to Appetite for the Outdoors. I'm Chef Chad McIntyre, and today we're gonna to be doing a crispy fried honey glazed rabbit dish. So we're gonna get our spice blend put together. So we've got salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, cayenne, cumin, and oregano. We're gonna mix all of these guys up in a bowl. Everything's already been measured out and all of our recipes will be listed at the end of the segment. Once this is all good and incorporated, you wanna take half of the mixture and mix it into your all-purpose flour that's been measured out right here. We're gonna take the other half of our seasoning mix and we're gonna coat all this right here. Just kind of get in there and mix everything up. Good mix, now we're gonna take our buttermilk and coat this down and we're gonna let it marinate for about two hours. So while the rabbits marinate, we've got our red chili paste and some good local honey right here. I like mine a little on the spicy side. Good two to one ratio on the honey to chili paste. I'm gonna set that off to the side too. And now we're gonna get ready to fry the rabbit that's been marinated. All right, so we're gonna take our marinated rabbit and our seasoned flour right here, and we've got a 10-quart Carolina cooker with a strainer basket in here. So we're gonna do more of a little bit of a deep fry on it. And I'm actually gonna double batter this. So we're gonna go back into the milk wash and let it cool. So what we're gonna do is just take our glaze. Like I said, I like mine a little bit on the spicy side, but we're just gonna drizzle this right across this hot, crispy rabbit. So there we go, nice simple dish. Goes with a ton of sides that you can do for the summertime, which is really nice, or even any time of the year. But like anything, it's always nice to be able to bring the wild game inside and enjoy it with your family. We got a squirrel out of the nest and the bird came down and it was quite the, very difficult to get him on camera. The Carolina All Out crew is in Harnett County hunting squirrels using raptors. On this side. Get him, get him, get, get her, Harrison, get her. Back side. Hurry, 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 hurry. Oh, it's brown. Now that's your food. Hold up. 
I see him right there in that tree. Going up that pine. There he goes, going up the pine. Okay. The pine? Right there, right there, guys. Boom, boom! Oh. <laughs> they're after him, boy. Boy, they gone, they gone after him now. That was good. But these awesome. These two are fun to watch. So they've caught a squirrel, bumped him out of a nest. I don't know, probably 100 yards or more, huh? We've gone a long way. And, <laughs> and uh, he's just been tapping, and the birds are working in tandem. Very interesting. Never seen this before. And they've got him right here. And look at there. This is how it works in the wild. And uh, these two guys are in the field getting it done. <laughs> Very cool. This is serious. so cool, man. Serious about it. <laughs> yeah, they're serious. I mean, this is great to see this kind of thing there. This is uh, very primal to see what you're seeing here but it is the way it works in nature. You know, this experience with these birds of prey was really something that I've seen play out, you know, from a distance in the wild, but to have a ringside seat and to know that the relationship between the falconer and the falcon, if you will, the raptor or the bird of prey, I'm very privileged to be able to witness this, but to see it all happen right in front of my eyes was just an amazing experience. And I've been, I've witnessed something neat today. I'll tell you what, it's been a, it's been a great experience. I have a lot of people come to me, they see me with a bird and they think it is fascinating and it's the coolest thing. And, and it is, it really is a, a neat thing. I'm, I'm a pretty blessed guy to be able to do what I do. What they don't understand is the amount of time that goes into it. The, the first thing that you try to explain to people about the training process, but you have to make them understand that these are not dogs. They don't want to be petted. They don't understand, good bird, you know. The only thing that works with these birds is food. They want the path of least resistance. What they soon learn is, it's a lot easier for me to fly to him and land on that glove. It takes way less energy than it does for me to have to go out and hunt all day in the hopes that I'm gonna catch something. Each bird can only be used once on a hunt to ensure that they stay in top physical condition. These birds are honed and cared for with the same precision as well-trained athletes. So we've just released a Red Hawk whose name is Peyton, and we got Harrison here who's Chip's son. And Harrison, you are one of the, were one of the youngest. Licensed falconer in North Carolina. Matter of fact, the first 12 year old ever licensed. The first 12 year old ever licensed in North Carolina. When I first started working with birds, I was probably around 10 years old, but whenever I first got my license, I was 12 years old. I had to go to Raleigh and take the test, and my dad had to be my sponsor. And very time consuming. You got to have a lot of patience with the birds, I think. Maybe like when the bird likes to fly away and we have to chase it down, that's the kind of part you got to be a little patient with. You see him? On oh, one of them shake. Oh! Huh? Which tree? Oh, way over there. Okay. Get there, Harrison. Get there. Oh! Get him, girl. Come on. Get there, Harrison. He's coming down. He's right there in the crook. Carolina All Out is brought to you by the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. Go hunt, go fish, go wild. Carolina Cooker Cast Iron Cookware, a tradition born in the South. XGO, those who know, wear XGO. Montgomery Community College, educating since 1967. DNZ Products, precision scope mounts and scope rings. Miopta Sport Optics, see more, hunt longer. And by the Dixie Deer Classic, the South's premier sporting event. Don't go away, there's more Carolina All Out coming up. We register at New Sports Shop, Kent, North Carolina. I'm here to talk to y'all about a basic pier fishing rig. What we have here is a Penn 3000 series reel. It'd be considered a medium class on a seven foot medium action line with a light tip. And we're gonna spool this with 15 pound braided line for sensitivity and also with a fluorocarbon 30 pound leader. 
It's low visibility water the fish can't see and it also makes easier night time. And there's two different ways you can fish is bottom rig or gotcha plugs. Bottom rig is just a standard two drop bottom rig. You'll tie your main line to the top, weight to the bottom, two to three ounce, depending on weather, current with cut bait, either shrimp, cut squid, mullet. Second of all, I'd like to talk about the gotcha plugs. That's another popular way of fishing. And we have a various number of colors for water clarity, weather, and just tie this on on a 12 to 18 inch leader and just cast it, retrieve it. It's good for blue, Spanish, and if you'd like to learn more about a basic pier setup, please come down to the new sports shop. We'll be glad to help you. Get him, girl. Come on. Get there, Harrison. He's coming down. CAO host Chris Douglas and outfitter Chip Gentry of Hawk Manor Falconry are hiking a woodlot in Harnett County looking for squirrels. Their weapon of choice, a well-trained bird of prey. Hurry, come out. He's out. He's out. She's on. Ah, 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 ah. She almost Harrison, got him. Come on. Get there, Harrison. Come down. <laughs> ah. He's right there in the crook. I've been a producer and a videographer for a lot of years and and so you know some situations are easier than others but I can tell you when you're shooting with a camera up into the sky a lot of backlight you've got an animal that is small to begin with and then it's moving through trees at, in, in just such a high rate of speed and it's erratic at that it's very difficult to video these birds catching prey oh here it comes I heard him. Do it. He's coming. He's bike. Oh, 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 oh. Going up, going up, going up. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, boom. God, bro. Oh, my God. Did I get it? Did I get it? But to see this hog come in, you know, you got a gap to six, eight inches at most. The squirrel is going up there and the hawk comes in just like smooth. I mean, absolutely smooth. Inverts upside down, catches the squirrel with one talon, comes between two trunks of a tree that are six to eight inches wide, folds his wings back and comes through that gap and then floats down effortlessly with the squirrel. I mean, heck, who does that? Amazing. I witnessed it. I was within feet of it. I'm very privileged. <laughs> Ooh, ooh. Oh my God, did I get it? Did I get it? So she's got him. And if we were to walk off, she would start eating. But what she's waiting for is for me to give her the reward. So we've taught her that that's not yours. This is yours. See, she's already looking at me over here because she knows that I'm fixing to give her this mouse. And so that's her reward for doing what she was supposed to. She'll let me have the entire squirrel. And then what we'll do is we'll call her up. That a girl. And then she'll get to eat a little more. That's, Did she come between the yeah, forks? Yeah, I literally saw I will take a look. about I, this I was just above my head, and then I seen just a flash. <laughs> and she was on Back the at the lodge, the team watches the footage to see what they just experienced in slow motion. So she's already making her move. She's already seen him, and she's coming up. Watch this. Upside down and boom! Oh my God. She was upside down. I've seen footage in slow motion, but I've never seen it in the like frame by frame. And that was just amazing to see every single movement and catching the squirrel on her back, riding herself, and then just helicoptering down so softly. You know, I, I felt the thrill probably not unlike some of the kings and the sheiks and all the other ones felt, you know, seeing that happen for the first time. I mean, just mesmerizing to see that. Harrison, thank you a bunch, man. Appreciate that. Chip, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. This is great. We're not going to do it with a gun. We're going to do it. Oh, in this. What are we, we going to say? Up there, huh? Up there, huh?
Oh man, I'm sorry, Charlie. I got you started. And I didn't even have my, my mind. I, I had something yesterday. I was gonna say. Try to get something to win up in huh? Cool bird. <laughs> uh oh. Stay, stay balanced, everybody. Squirrel hunting with Justin Bieber. This is Carolina All Out. <laughs> I had Daisy.